conversation, we know for a fact that from 2003 up until now, this has been a topic of contention. You know, the mining in the lower Zambezi, different stakeholders have come in place to give their position. We know that in the past few days, especially members of the opposition political parties have also come ablaze, you know, to shoot down... Uh, well, they claim that the new Dawn administration has given a go ahead for you know uh, this particular mining uh, to begin its operations, but the minister has said nothing about it. Uh, and as things stand, there hasn't been really no permission that has been granted, and whatever is being operated on is based off conversations that started as well back as 2003. Let's start it off then. 2003. What happens in 2003? We'll, we'll draw it a little bit back to then. 2003 is the year that Zambezi Resources Limited, as it was called then, approaches the MMD government. They've got an interest in this area, and they are granted a license to go ahead with the mine exploration. So they're now given a license to go ahead and explore, find the minerals, if at all they exist, in this uh, Lower Zambezi National Park, and they go ahead and do that. So this entire period, they're doing that. There's huge investments into all of this, and some of the money that they go ahead and use is um, grants, uh, and these grants are provided by Glencore, um, in, in the, and these people invested more than 12 million United States dollars on exploration operations in the three prospect areas of the Kangalui Special Grant. Um, and then later, Mwembeshi Resources Limited was... Uh, uh, one that proceeded with this project. Remember, I said it started with Zambezi uh, Resources Limited, and then it went over to Mwembeshi Resources Limited. So there's uh, a 2003 where this license for exploration is given, and then over the years, we get into 2011. 2011, this organization uh, gets a license, and they get a license to now begin their mining operations. But they've got a lot of other procedures to follow before they can proceed with this operation. So what do they need to do? They need to have, among other things, and it's not only the environmental and social impact assessment, they need a lot of other aspects for them to be able to get their, their license into functioning. So they proceed with this and they present before the Zambia Environmental Management Agency, ZEMA, uh, they present to the Zambia Environmental Management Agency a, an environmental impact, impact assessment. Mm -hmm. This was in, uh, in uh, 20, they, they were awarded their mining license in 2012. And this was because they were going to submit an environmental impact assessment to the Zambia Environmental Management Agency, which they did in September 2012. And the, uh, Zema rejected this environmental impact assessment that was presented by Mwembeshi Resources Limited, and that was in September 2012. So Zema says this mining project that you bring before us, and based on this environmental impact assessment that we've been given, it's got the potential to adversely affect water bodies, the environment, mm. and wildlife ecosystems of the Lower Zambezi. And by virtue of that, it means they cannot begin their mining activity of course. Uh, in, in that period because they need that permission from the Zambia Environmental Management Agency. And this environmental impact assessment is very important in that, uh, in that stage. However, a few years down the line, this organization decides to appeal this decision. They appeal this decision that has been brought forward by the Zambia Environmental Management Agency. They go to the minister, who is well within uh, his right, to overrule or overturn this decision. And this is based on the Environmental Management Act number 11. Mm. So Mwembeshi Resources writes to then Minister of uh, Lands, Natural Resources and Environmental Protection, Harry Kalaba, and this was against uh, appealing against a ruling that was made by the Zambia Environmental Management Agency. And just as he has the power, the minister, based on the powers given to him yeah. in the Environment Management Act of 2011, he does overrule the decisions of the Zambia Environmental Management Agency and goes ahead 
to approve of this environmental impact assessment that had been rejected by the Zambia Environmental Management Agency. It's important to mention that at this particular time, there's nothing illegal that's happening. Mm. Yeah. Um, there's something questionable, but there's nothing illegal. Because people have the right to question decision by a minister because, I mean, people obviously begin to wonder why this decision has been overturned mm. when it is by a professional body, such as the Zambia Environmental Management Agency. So this decision is overturned in 2014. Mm. And uh, this... And just to mention, Jonah, mm. that, you know, cabinet does not work as an individual. It works as a collective... Uh, as a collective and those collective responsibility, you know, from then the government of the Patriotic Front for this particular decision to be overturned because uh, I remember, you know, uh, DP president then, Harry Kalaba, stating that, look, I did not individually overturn this decision. This was a cabinet. It was brought before cabinet and collectively as cabinet, we decided to overturn the decision by Zema.